everyone. I'm Shannon Slatten. Every day our news team is out in your community bringing you stories from the place where you call home. Here's a look at today's stories. And remember, you can always find more on our website, ccxmedia.org. George Floyd's death has sparked a lot of conversations across the country. On Wednesday, Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center city leaders came together at our CCX Crate studio to discuss these important issues during their joint community conversation. That was a grave injustice to that man and to his family and to the community. Local city leaders angered and concerned. It was not a police tactic. It was murder. As they grapple with what happened last week to George Floyd. On that day, we all witnessed what people of color, particularly black men, uh, experience all the time, all too often at the hands of police. Both mayors and police chiefs from the Brooklyn's address community questions on the outrage. In Minnesota, a black person is 13 times more likely to be killed by police than a white person. What is the Brooklyn Center Police Department doing to remedy this disparity? Chief Tim Gannon says the key is to recognize unconscious biases in use of force issues. And it has to be corrected. And if it can't be corrected, then that officer needs to be removed. Potential new recruits go through psychological testing. We test for some of those things related to racism or the ability to speak up. The group also spoke to the importance of cultural awareness in police departments. What may diffuse a situation in one culture may infuse a situation in other cultures. I think we also have to um, uh, increase uh, and bring uh, up to par the number of officers uh, that live and represent the communities that they're policing. And while local leaders work to better the system, they say they can't do it without the residents. But I can tell you at times when we <clears throat> attempt to engage the community, you know, related to body cams and some other things, not a lot of people show up. So we are left with making a decision on what we think would be the best for the communities that don't look like me. In Brooklyn Park, Pafu Yang, CCX News. It's a chant that's reverberated throughout the world over the past week and a half. Yet this march, in honor of the man who died while being detained by Minneapolis police on Memorial Day, isn't taking place on city streets in an urban environment, but rather in a park in the western suburb of Plymouth. I'm a little overwhelmed. Jessica Campos organized this walk for George Floyd, in large part so that children like her four-year-old daughter can better understand what's happening. You know, when my daughter first asked why people were fighting, um, you know, we told her it was because somebody died. Um, and when she asked what happened, you know, we just had to be honest. And we said there was a police officer that killed a black man. Um, and we asked her if she knew what being black meant. It's a conversation many of the parents here likely never expected to have with their kids at such a young age. And this event is one way to make sure that the next generation understands the sometimes complicated dynamic between people of color and law enforcement. We don't want to give the message that all police are bad people. We want, you know, our children to be able to depend on the police if they ever have a situation that they need help with. Um, so we don't want them to be scared. However, we do want them to know that bad things happen um, and that race is, is a part of it. George Floyd! Around 200 people took part in this march around Plymouth Creek Park Wednesday evening, which is roughly 18 miles away from the site of George Floyd's fatal encounter. Well, when you have a community that is predominantly white, uh, it is very important to still have these conversations and have these type of demonstrations, uh, simply because that just let us know that the conversation is being held. Justin Lewis is a minister and motivational speaker who came from Champlin to take part in this event. Let's hope that we don't have to continue with these marches. Following the march. I want to link arm in arm with you all, but because of COVID, we cannot. <laughs> Lewis right. said a few words to the crowd to encourage them to keep the conversation going in the days and months to come. That shows the world and this community that we do have advocates that do not look like us. In Plymouth, George Floyd! Delane Cleveland, CCX News. Cities and groups have been remembering George Floyd, the black man who died in the custody of Minneapolis police, with marches, vigils, and moments of silence. On Thursday in Robbinsdale, church bells rang at 1 p.m. and people observed a moment of silence to pay respects to George Floyd and his family. Here's what it looked like. My 
know that there's a lot of things happening in Minneapolis, but it is nice to have Robbinsdale doing their own part too. I felt the presence of my students and my students of color. I felt the presence of all the voices of the black people that have also suffered everything that has happened for over 400 years. And we're not just here for George Floyd, but every other death that has happened due to police brutality and racism. To come here and have a, have a moment to sit in, in reflection of what that means for our community and for us as a society moving forward. It hit heavy. As an educator, it did give me hope that, you know, that this is my part. The chimes wasn't chiming for the end, but also the beginning of voices to be heard and to do my part as a biracial educator that, you know, for my students that this is a time to start. It's hard. Find more local news stories at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.